what did you do while you're in the search? What do you do now? So, yes. so I'm Joanna McFadden. I am the program manager for veterans and individuals with disabilities at Southern California Edison. I've been in the military uh, just a few weeks ago, maybe uh, 21 years, so I'm still serving. I uh, was JAG prior service, um, just enlisted, then came out after a couple of deployments, um, got back in, decided to commission, still serving my time. Um, but I uh, did personal security detail, uh, public affairs, uh, a lot of random stuff, um, and ended up in HR and kind of transitioned that. Individuals such as yourselves who are interested in transitioning to the civilian sector um, understand what that journey looks like and how to translate those skills into careers um, at our organization. Hello, my name is Eric Minkowski. I'm currently a global manager of governance risk and compliance in a large finance company. That journey started about 12 years ago when I was just working in technology, not security at all. It's a different conversation, but, you know, at that point in my life, I decided to join the military. I did five years active duty as a force reconnaissance marine, so it's a very diverse career change. Uh, many, many veterans and people looking to get into information security are coming from something completely unrelated, so I look forward to linking up with those people that are jumping into something new. Um, from there, uh, transitioned out, became a consultant. Uh, my whole last year of active duty, it was hitting the books. We were coming back from training. I was in my room for six hours, just getting familiar with these new concepts, how my previous experience in technology translated into security, how I could apply that and make that work. Taking the structure from the military um, wasn't really something that I focused on. It just, it was ancillary to my main goal, which was to learn. So that, that did help, but I wouldn't define my experience by having to be a veteran to then, you know, be structured and, and aggressive in the professional world. I think that everyone's different. We all have unique personalities and we take our value and our strengths from, from every experience that we have. Um, so right now, I'm, I am I really enjoyed, most of you here for, for Paul's talk, I really enjoyed some of the things I could directly relate to, which was, you don't have to be technical, you don't have to be, you don't have to be a manager of people. You just find that balance where you fit in the organization. If you strive for strategic influence and go for that, if you really want to get in the weeds and stare at, uh, you know, log traffic and web traffic all day and be an engineer, then go that way. <laughs> oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> no, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to some questions for people who are really curious about stepping at the foot of the door of something that they're not really from. Uh, my name is Akil Phillips. I um, spent nine years in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, and the Marine Corps was honestly my first job, so uh, directly after that, I jumped into a security engineer position at uh, one of the top three uh, car companies uh, in the world. Uh, from that, transition to the same uh, background check company that uh, Aaron works at. So he, he'll catch a couple jabs back. Um, <laughs> Def definitely, uh, I definitely agree to pick back on what you said, uh, listening to the last talk. There, there's a lot of things that are, you know, uh, comparable, right, in, in my career. Uh, I actually started as a uh, IT professional in the Marine Corps and transitioned into cybersecurity in the Marine Corps, and then that transition made it a little bit easier, but uh, still pretty difficult because, you know, as Joanna mentioned, the jargon is much different and there's a lot of things that you have to get rid of um so being that the marine corps was my first job and then my next two uh jobs after that uh, i i think i've been pretty successful uh, i've been to share those experiences with you. yeah so i wanted to talk about uh, you know our we all had different transitions from the military um i served a, a technical role as well in the military but i found it really difficult to get people in the civilian sphere to understand you know what it was that I actually did and how it directly related to national security and how it would be an asset in the cybersecurity world realm. I know, Kelly, I think you had probably the easiest transition here because cyber definitely directly related, but um, you know, Aaron, especially coming from Force Recon, 
how was that in making that transition from something that seemingly doesn't relate to that technical role? Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so working in GRC, it's, it's, it was a very, I wouldn't say it was easier, but it was very unique because I had to take, there's a lot of people willing to give their advice and look over your resume and to translate your skills from the military, right? Well, then it ends up being a sentence that you yourself have to translate. Like, okay, wait, what what situation was I in that makes this bullet point relevant to, to this job? It, sometimes it, you can kind of dilute your actual true experience. Um, so I just focused on what I did. There was things I did after duty that were, maybe I was on the range, maybe I was in the middle of the bush, but I was doing risk management at some point. I was wearing a crypto key around my neck. There's, there's experiences and knowledge there that you sometimes don't make that connection with. You don't always have to change. To, so someone, uh, the hiring manager can understand what you're talking about. The, we can kind of sprinkle in the soft skills once in a while, but we don't have to focus just on that. Um, I like to I like to be people, and, but I also, I, I need to know just enough to be dangerous if I want to live in their world for a day or be able to give them guidance. Uh, you can only lead through people for so long until they ask you a technical question and well, and you're supposed to you're supposed to know that. Um, so it was, it was quite interesting going from an area basically completely unrelated, but then I did find value from that. I, I did do uh, strategic planning. I did do risk management when I was doing those things. And then I executed. I created a plan or a procedure, which I still do. Um, I'm a manager of a team of seven now, and I still sit down and write SOPs, just like Paul was saying earlier. It's, it's a skill that enabled me to give structure to something that would otherwise be unstructured. And it was from knowledge and experience that I had before that most would say has nothing to do with it, but it does. You can take you can take value from every experience that you have, regardless if it was uh, being in the information security within the Marine Corps, or if it was being in uh, Motor T, and then now you're working. Actually, a coworker of ours, of ours was in Motor T, and he's now a SOC engineer. So he, he took the experience, yeah, my whole last year, I was hitting the books, and it, you just got to learn enough to be dangerous and, and move the direction that you want to move. And, and just, can you briefly say what exactly force recon is for those who don't, maybe don't understand? So what did, what did you do day to day? It's uh, it's small, uh, limited scale raids, special insert extract. We were halo, we were free fallers, we were combat divers. We, we hit the house. Uh, I don't want to get too, <laughs> uh, yeah, too, too uh, using troops. Sorry, that are unfamiliar with, with the crowd. Um, I don't like to make the comparison, but most people know what a Navy SEAL is. If there were to be an equivalent within the Marine Corps, well, now there's two different two different branches of that, but that would be it in the Marine Corps. That same mission set, same training set, but different chain of command, and that's where, in different branch, uh, and that's where the lines really draw. I wanted to add to you know, what you were saying. So I think some of the things that most people find the most difficult is understanding their own skill set and how to translate those when they're applying for a job. So most of the time they'll look at the job description and they're like, yeah, I can do that. And then you say, what does your resume say? Because the recruiter says, well, what does your resume say to justify that you can do that? Because it doesn't match up. Your military resume just looks completely like something foreign and then you're trying to match it up to this new language. And you're sitting there, well, like, yeah, I did that. And I had a couple of you know, years of doing this, or I was on the field, like you were saying, or I was doing different capacities, but you can't exactly translate what that means for you. And that's difficult on both ends, right? Mm -hmm. So you have recruiters who are really interested and want to bring in, you have these, hey, we want to bring in veterans. We know that the skill sets are there more than just the soft skills, but there's difficulty in trying to translate it. And sometimes there's applications that dumb it down to those one sentences where it's just like, well, this MOS means this, or, you know, you were a saw gunner in the military, so you're going to be security now. Great. And that's not exactly what you want to do, right? Um, you have to do a little bit of research sometimes and find out, be able to explain it for yourself. If you can explain what you did and extract like all those fine details, then it's easier for a recruiter to help you and advocate for you at a company. And so that's part of what my job is. I don't have the, the IT background. So unlike everybody else who's on the panel, and they're all, you know, different branch of army over here. But <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> but just to be able to sit back and say, hey, I have some skills that are very different. Because we all go through cybersecurity every single 
quarter, there's like, did you update your cyber security? Did, did you do this? Did you think about OPSEC? Did you do planning? All those things are involved in this IT world, and they're so key to being able to articulate what you do, but we just dismiss them because they're in our day-to-day -day activities. So kind of keep that in mind when you're applying for, for some of these positions as well. Yeah, and that's, that's a good point because it's, you know, I was the cybersecurity manager for my division, making sure that everyone went through that training and that we had our our tapes that were absolutely, you know, security or top, top secret and making sure that those were secure at all times because that was for national security. But having to translate that to, yeah, but how are you a threat analyst? You know, and it, that can be that kind of disconnect that on, that's where we need both sides of the table, the, the hiring managers and recruiters that understand our skills and that we understand how to, how to talk to them and bridge that gap. So, very grateful that you're on that side and helping us translate. And how, how, what kind of challenges have we faced still being, you know, actively in the military and having them understand? Because um, we probably have to go away for either a weekend or anything else like that. How is that for anyone that's in the, in the reserves or still serving? Yeah, um, I, I have a great company that actually recognizes military service. So, like I said, I'm still serving. I've gone away for several several periods of time, um, not only for weekends for um, National Guard training, but for months at a time because we have warfare training um, for classes. So it's been periods of time where I'm gone. And it's critical that I know that I can come back to a company, not only come back, but come back to my own position and still continue my job and not at some entry level position that I know I should be, you know, at a, at a different pay grade or a different level. Um, our company has a very good military policy, a military leave policy that we adhere to. Um, there are advocates there at the company that make sure that they recognize what you do if you're still serving. And there's number, there's a number of people who are actually in the military still serving within the company. So it's not foreign um, to the company. Um, maybe some some people may be unfamiliar because every once in a while you get a new department, it's like, I don't know what this means, right? Somebody says they're going to leave. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> So it, it takes that conversation when you're having, um, when you're getting to that point where you need to leave and being proactive and talking to your managers and saying, hey, this is what my schedule looks like. I'm anticipating I'll be leaving for this period of time, but here's a plan. And so as long as you have a good plan of action, just like you would do for anything, you know, you can't leave anything behind, right? I mean, you have to think about how do you execute the mission, regardless if you're there or not. And that's with any job. Yeah, and that's, that's just really good advice. Just to, you know, and, and again, for anyone that's a civilian here, just that you understand, you know, sometimes you have to do those sort of things. Um, now, I want to wanna open up to anyone. Did any did any of you in your transition have any good mentors or anybody either in the military or outside the military that helped guide you to a certain path? Um, I think I feel like you probably have. But especially with, with your role being in cyber in the military, did anyone tell you to go down that path, or how did you get there? Uh, it, it was an easy decision at that, <laughs> at that point. <laughs> um, because the entire time, if you're in a cybersecurity section in the Marine Corps, um, the entire time that you're working and you're doing something, there's that one guy in your shop that's, researching and looking, he's like, man, if we were out in the civilian world, we'd get this, <laughs> doing this. right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, I, I don't, I don't think that it, uh, the, the one thing that really made sense to me was we did have one guy that got out for a couple of years and then came back in and he was really successful, ended up coming back in, um, during the time that, you know, there was a downturn in the market. Uh, so it was 2008, 2009, he came back in and he explained things to me extremely well. Uh, his name was uh, Denny Morris. And he was an amazing speaker, right? Even as a guy. Um, <laughs> you know, the divided, right? Um, and uh, he, he broke things down extremely well in terms of, well, don't call it this acronym that we call it in the Marine Corps because it's not the same when you get out there, right? Um, yeah, you can look at this job description and say, yeah, I can do this, but 
uh, really look at the job description and pull out those things that you can't do and start gaining your experience there and start working on translating the jargon and the acronyms into something that is actually understandable to the recruiter because if the recruiter doesn't understand it, you're never going to make it to the manager. And just, you know, him saying, yeah, keep looking at the, the, the job titles that you want and start requesting the, the jobs inside the Marine Corps or, or inside the military that will give you that experience. Because we all know, you know, re regardless of the things that you're told to do, there's also opportunity in the other things, the big challenges that somebody else might be working on. And just saying, hey, I want to get on that was really important. And then being able to do that um, on your own time as well. Uh, one of my, my biggest pet peeves with uh, my Marines was if the Marine Corps wasn't going to pay for a certification, then sometimes they would say, okay, well, I don't need that. And it's like, no, go get it. Go get it anyway. Be willing to pay for it, whether a company is willing to pay for it or not. And I've, kind of, I've saved that mentality uh, even to now where I'll say I'll put 5000 aside to, for my personal training budget, regardless of whether the company is going to support me on these training efforts or not. Because that's my uh, that's my my piggyback. That's my way out, right? If I wanted to jump into GRC or privacy, I had that money set aside so I could go to the training myself. And and I want to take a quick poll: is how long did it take for each of you to get into either the position you're in today or just in cybersecurity? So immediately, like between so from the time up, you got out to the time you got into cybersecurity, how long did it take you? Uh, I, I, uh, figured it might be 214 on Friday and I was at work on Monday. Yeah. So I have a very different experience. <laughs> 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 oh, well, I was overseas for my last year of active duty. So not only did I have to become a civilian again, but I also had to find a job at the same time. So getting up at three in the morning and doing interviews for a company in California, that was like a very odd experience to me. Okay, so I have eye warriors. Um, like, just thinking about <laughs> other things you don't have to worry about when you're when you're getting ready to go on an interview. Um, and I reached out everywhere. I was absorbing information everywhere I could, and I was actually get I was getting certifications, but some I chose not to. Um, I would get to the end, last video, okay, the end. But what I got was knowledge, and I got enough experience using free tools and trials to know what I was talking about, to be familiar with it enough that. I could get in the place and get over the, oh, they're, they're new, they're learning the business. Now it's 30 days to really get good at what you're doing and then progress from there. Um, I as I had a mentor, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna combine your two answers because they, they matter here. So I had a mentor in the Marine Corps and he was the guy who would hold his iPhone upside down and not know how to work it up. Technology was not his thing. Um, actually, I still hold iPhones upside down, don't know how to work them, but, uh, he, he said something that we, we got into a tough situation with, with management. Uh, and he said, you know what? At the end of the day, just be a good person and, and do your job as best you can. I'll get you very far. And I took that. That's one of the only things that I took literally from the military and brought it right in without having to change or translate anything. It's, it's just like, do you care? If you're doing a job that you don't care about, you're probably not going to be good at it. And people are going to tell. You, are you willing to help? You're probably willing to help because you're passionate about it. So my mentor in the military taught me to be patient and to, to go after what I thought mattered. Because at the end of the day, that does translate into your work product. When I got out of the military, as, as much as I was dedicated and studying, and I was reaching out and applying everywhere. Applying in my home state. I was applying in the state where I owned a home. I was applying in the state where I wanted to... Got it. Uh, I was applying in the state where I wanted to work. Um, and when I got out, I didn't have a job, didn't have a car, came back, and I was like, well, it, nice, uh, had, it was a good run, like I tried, now I'm gonna go shoot for down here. This is where I thought I could be, now I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna go down here. And there's a, a statistic, I don't wanna incorrectly cite it, but we've all heard most veterans leave their first job within X amount of time, or X percent of veterans leave within one year. It's confidence, my confidence was shot. I didn't believe in myself anymore, as, as strongly as I felt on my way out, until I finally got out, it was, so I really, I didn't stop. I kept trying, 
And I did leave my first job out of the Marine Corps within one year. I, I made myself that statistic. And you know what it was? It was confidence again. Kicking the door down and getting in and then staying there are two different things. We can put confidence on the outside, but even when you get in, you still are that you're the underdog. You have that underdog syndrome. You're like, wait, okay, finally, I got this job. Am I doing it right? Is there, this, is there a stigma following me from the military? Well, usually it's it, people think like, oh, he's going to freak out and be mean. No, people act differently to you. They're not worried about you acting differently to them. People treat you differently. They think they have to say or do certain things around you. It's very interesting. And as cliche as it sounds, um, people say, get a mentor, get a mentor. And I never really identified with that. Like, I'm going to go up to somebody. I'm going to go find somebody to be my mentor. Like, how's he going to? And, and Paul, it, he's saying things that I hear on podcasts. You read in books. You get a mentor, get a mentor. But it didn't. And I never searched for one. And no one ever sought me out. But then I found one. Because every time I spoke to this person, I learned something. And I took something away from that person. And I was like, I really want to keep talking to you. Like, you're experienced, but you have different experience than me. I'm avoiding confirmation bias by hearing what I want to hear or only relating to the things I'm already familiar with. This guy has completely diverse experience for me and experience, uh, or he has diverse knowledge for me and experience in a different area of business. So that's the person that I felt that I could learn the most from, stepping outside my comfort zone just as I did when I transitioned. Every time I made a move, I was so uncomfortable and so uncertain of myself. But then as soon as I got a hang of it and I and I found out that, hey, I could excel at this or be good at it, then it gave me that confidence to move forward. And that's, that's how I'm progressing in my career, not because of the pay or the title, but because I have goals and I have I have a desire to lead that's bringing me in the direction I'm going. Okay. Can I piggyback off of that a little bit? <laughs> so I, I've known... Aaron since February, and you know, he, he's always been the fine example of what somebody should be. It's the author, right? I did not. Aww. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, seriously. So I, and I say that because um, I, I totally get what you meant when you said people react to you differently. Two weeks out of the Marine Corps, yeah, I had that job on Monday, but two weeks in, already in front of HR. And it wasn't necessarily that I did something wrong. I, I thought it was going to be, I said something wrong. I was too aggressive or I cursed at someone or something like that. And it wasn't that. It was this person perceived me this way, right? Um, and it was the scariest thing ever. So when I got to the company that I'm at now and I met Aaron, I'm always looking at Aaron. The kid is always sharp. Right? He's always best <laughs> night. Right? And oh, anybody has a question about it? Go to Aaron. Go to Aaron. Go to Aaron. Um, and even the way that he speaks and carries himself. Um, but you would watching Aaron in the office, you would never guess that he had the challenges that he just described. Uh and that I mean that's just the, the truth. Um when you show up, they don't know your background and your story. And the fact that I didn't know that background and that story is just a testament to it. It, 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 I, it really is confidence. It, it genuinely is confidence because I would never know that it was so difficult for you. Um, and not only would I have not known that it was difficult for you, it, man, I, I would have spent the rest of my life thinking Aaron was just a rock star and everything from his life. Uh, I didn't like him at first, to be honest. We, we <laughs> joked about this because he came off as a really cocky Marine, and I was like, oh, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> I'm Navy, he's Marine, he's real cocky, and then he, he apparently didn't like me because I felt like I had to step my game up when I was talking with him, and I felt like I had to explain myself. And he was like, yeah, you were li- really long-winded. And I was like, I thought you were challenging me. But it was... It was great, and it's and you know that is very true. It's like we are as veterans were perceived a certain way, and especially women veterans. A lot of times, um, I don't know if you run into any of this, but I've run into a lot of times where I might be out with my bearded boyfriend, and um, he's mistaken for a veteran, or you know, or you know anybody else. Um, you know, it can be really challenging because then I'll still get questions like, "Oh, you actually served." 
And so there's 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 challenges that I you know I have to I find that I have to kind of explain myself a lot, or sometimes I have to kind of tone myself down because the in the military there's not a whole lot of us that are women, and a lot of times I've been accused of being aggressive or uh, several times I've been called a pit bull, which I was my favorite. So I was like, have you met a pit bull? They're adorable. Um, <laughs> and it's been it's been challenging for me to kind of find that transition where I'm like I'm trying not to be overbearing. This is how I am. Why aren't you on my level? And that can be that's something that I faced as a woman trying to find that balance. So have you faced any of those issues? Yeah, I think sometimes um, there there's definitely a unique space when it comes to females and females who served in the military. Um, and and then so I'll I'll take a step back. I work in diversity and inclusion, so I want to make this inclusive. <laughs> so I will say that there's there's a perception that we feel like being in the military in general. Mm-hmm. And so you come in with this sense of familiarity of like your rank and file and structure. Mm-hmm. You know how it works. It makes sense. Like this person is my senior, so mm-hmm. they get this level of respect. This person is my peer, so we should be able to talk on a certain level. This person is below me. You shouldn't know anything yet. You can't talk to me. Turn around. So, you know, it's like... <laughs> Those type of, the structure is very clear and delineated. When you get into the corporate world, it's like this umbrella tree of ranks and, and structure and authority and everybody's different and titles they really don't mean, they mean something, but they don't mean anything in terms of how you communicate, right? So you're trying to hold hold your ground and stand your opinion. You're just like, why can't, why are you not listening? Do you see what my title is? I'm such a better expert. You should listen to me. And it, and it gets kind of muffled in that situation. So I found that as a female now, sometimes I have to justify my military experience to get people to listen, to talk about things that are veteran related or military related. And so you sometimes you're like, well, in the military, we did X, Y, and Z. And they're like, oh, they did that there. Okay, that makes sense, right? Or, oh, you're a female, so you serve. Like, well, did you see combat though? Are you really like military? And so you find yourself trying to justify things in some arenas to, to put your pedigree out there. And it's the same with anybody of what school did you go to? How long did you serve? What branch are you in? Like you're going to find that 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 conversation in, in, in a lot of different arenas, and especially if you get around military folks, you all you sit back and be like, oh, what branch are you? Oh, okay. Well, how long did you serve though? Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. What position did you hold? Like did there's you always, you're right, did you deploy? Yeah. There's always some sense of challenge, regardless if it's in work or in just regular interaction. So you have to lean on and be aware of who you're talking to. So I find myself slightly in a conversation with someone subtly saying, hey, you know, this is what I did in in this experience. These 21 years of experience have allowed me to understand X, Y, and Z or to be able to translate these skill sets or to advocate. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense now. I don't see some of my peers having to do that as much as I had to do it. But it also could be you. You know, people perceive you to be a certain age, so maybe sometimes it may not um, come across that your military experience and your youthful presentation gives you enough to challenge someone who might be a little bit more senior. And so then it becomes this whole, well, those millennials, those this, those that, you know. So there's a, a variety of different things that can play into it. But I, I, I feel being able to communicate, um, being your best advocate, um, if you are aware, self-aware of what you're talking about, people will generally follow you, you know, like to a testament. Like if, if you know what you're talking about and you're passionate about what you're doing, and you actually know how to advance that, that strategy and how to move forward, people will generally follow you and they will advocate and rally behind you. Mm-hmm. So it may take a little bit of push to get them to know who you are first, um, but they they generally are on your side um, for the most part. And I will say to the training aspect, one of the beautiful, so promotion for my company here, sorry, <laughs> um, shameless plug. So we do have um, education benefits. So along with many other benefits that the company has for those who are in the military, this is a benefit for anybody that's within the company that you can advance your education. You get that removal every year. So if there's certificates or if there's programs or anything that you think will help you in your career, the company says we will invest money in you to go and do that. So take advantage of organizations that may give them to you for free, organizations that you work at that sponsor. 
sponsor you and take advantage of programs that you can get learning and continue to learn and grow for yourself because it'll always be something you can take with you no matter what company you're working at. Yeah, and to, to piggyback off that, um, the, for organizations, um, did, did any of you benefit from any sort of organizations when you were like transitioning out or even while you were in so you can share that maybe others can benefit from those organizations as well? Yeah, I, I definitely did. Um, and it, it's mostly been recent. Um, I showed up at the current company that I'm at with a, you know, a, a certain amount of knowledge with a particular tool. And uh, my boss looked at me and said, hey, I want you to be uh, at the architect level for this tool. I was like, okay, <laughs> right? And, and you know how it is sometimes when you're technical, you look at the next couple of levels up from a technical standpoint and go, that's a lot. And that's a lot of time and investment in learning these little moving pieces. And it was okay, well, I'm up for it. So, um, uh, they, it, and it was really a significant investment from uh, their standpoint. And then he turns around and he goes, oh, well, we also want you to be forensic trained as well. So, so yep, yeah, okay. Like, I guess I'm not leaving here for a while. Um, and more so not because of any sort of payback, but just because the time that it's going to take for me to complete all this training. So um, I, I, I find that whenever you get to an organization, there's always going to be opportunity. They, they already know where gaps are. And if you are willing to raise your hand and to conquer that monster and say, hey, I'm your guy, um, they'll give you the shot. And all you have to do is take that opportunity and run with it. Um, my experience, I'm an ISAC member. Um, the webinars there, the free tools, the forums. And you can go subscribe to get emails when there's new forum posts. And you can see these changes. People are exchanging ideas and their titles are director and SDP. And they're asking questions. You're like, wait, you should know that. But it's such a broad industry. It's every one little unique problem that this company has. It, it's, it's a great place to collaborate. Um, Unofficial, I guess you could say, organizations or groups would be the, uh, on LinkedIn, the Veteran Mentor Network. Jeez. Just just seeing people going through the same thing and, and maybe posting a link, and you follow that link, and you register for this program, it all turns out it all stems from somebody who made a post or shared something on LinkedIn. It's such a powerful tool. Um, and then there's uh, there's organizations that, that are more less industry-focused, like American Corporate Partners. Um, I, IBMF actually, I did the Syracuse sports on there. I didn't actually get the cert because I ran out of time. They, they eliminated the criteria in order to get the certification. So I did it and kind of wasted, but I got the knowledge. Um, I did CEH on there. It was very old and outdated. Um, but I did it and I got the knowledge that I needed to actually apply it somewhere in my job. I was like, oh, okay. So when I'm looking at this policy, this is how this actually maps back to how the organization is using it. Okay, now that I know that, this is how we can enforce it and monitor that. Where, you know, it's to tie, InfoSec is tying every part of the business together now more than ever. And, and that's where that privacy overlap is coming into play too. So information security and privacy are linking everyone together now. They're just not their own little closet. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, you actually stole mine. I was going to say IBMF is awesome. So, um, it's, that is something that uh, I, I believe spouses too can also take advantage of that. And you can get free IT training in everything. You can get your SEC plus from there. You can get all kinds of certifications and you apply and it's they get more and more funding every single year. They, I've seen them, I've watched them grow over the last several years and it's a really incredible program. Um, and I, I got to give a shout out to... Uh, Higher Heroes USA, which is one of the best uh, veterans nonprofits I've ever worked with, because um, they actually took the time to talk to me on my transition out about my service and work with me during the entire transition, not just like, cool, oh, write your little resume and then you go. They actually cared about me until I got until I got hired. So I definitely, I definitely appreciated having that and having someone to talk to in that network. Um, and again, the, the LinkedIn, you know, use your network, connect with other people on there. Because um, now, I, now I'm returning the favor on LinkedIn is I'm reaching out on the Veterans Network and then anybody that has a question, I try to answer that for the people that answer my questions and just give back and have that circle. 
So really great programs out there. And now running my own business, the Spirit Soul main programs for veteran-owned small businesses. And they'll give free advice and free uh, tools and all kinds of stuff that really helps you get that much further. Because um, you can get really lost in, in how the heck do I do all this? What do I do? There are people to help you for free, which is amazing. So all of those, I love all those groups. Do you have any organizations you like to work with? Or? Um, I think we accept them all. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, right? I don't have really too many specific for, for IT, and I'm in a bunch of different organizations. Mine focus mostly on either veteran services, um, resume building and writing and kind of career development, um, and or individuals with disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so all of them will generally support uh, individuals who are searching for avenues into getting and getting better employment. Um, a company that I know of personally is called <laughs> Menard Tree. They do consulting, um, resume writing and reviews. Um, but LinkedIn, finding people on Instagram, I know it sounds really cheesy, but if you can find groups that partner with other people and you see who they follow, so if you like an organization and you see somebody that they follow, they tend to have good information and good resources for you guys. And it's just knowledge, like getting through the the, seeing who the collect because most people like vets you kind of gravitate together most vet resources that you like gravitate together and share information so <coughs> do one you start to see their cluster of umbrella and who, who, who else you can partner with and, and they really are a great source of uh, information for you. So real quick and make it short uh, for me it's just been plugging into different information networks um, Twitter, believe it or not, is a really good resource. Um, whether you're technical or otherwise, um, going to a couple of scan boxes and then plugging into mailing lists from uh, those technical experts that are just on the tippy top tier of, of expertise within the industry. And uh, overall, it just, I, I want to say SANS, even some of their free work. Uh, going through and looking at some of the white papers has answered a cluster of issues that I've had. And just overall, um, don't be afraid if you're on your own to just kind of jump out the window and start your own thing in terms of what was Push it everywhere you can. Alright, lightning round. I'll so take some questions. Uh, give me a couple of sentences, each one can. What are some advice for veterans and people trying to transition into InfoSec, maybe not necessarily from a technical role? Uh, your resume is your personal marketing document, and you should spend a hell of a lot of time with it. You're in an advantage already. People go from being a veteran or go from InfoSec and they're moving all their way around. Sometimes they can pigeonhole themselves. Oh, you got a network background? We'll see where you can fit. So if you come from something else, you're already bringing way more value that everyone in InfoSec most likely doesn't have that expertise or exposure to. So focus on focus on that. Don't disregard it. Bring it with you. Um, leverage your communication skills. You're used in the military. You understand how valuable communication is. Practice it, practice it, practice it. Get ready to spout it off. You never know who you're going to meet. 
Uh, just last week, I was at the Madison Grace Hopper Conference, and I don't know if any of you know Arlen Hamilton. She's the founder of Backstage Capital. Um, she is the one who funds women-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, stuff like that. I ran into her at the conference by herself, and I got to talk to her for 30 seconds. You better believe I pitched my business to her. So you have to be ready because you never know who you're going to talk to. And be ready to talk about what you did, what you want to do, and mention that you're a veteran. So that is helpful for everybody. So I think that that leaves us a little bit of time here. Does anyone have any questions for anybody on the panel with any anything they want to just want to say one more time? What's your what's your official title? Everywhere so you know. Uh, senior security engineer, mobile manager of governance risk and compliance. Program manager for veterans and individuals with disabilities. Yeah, and security engineer and owner of business now. So, anyone have any questions for any of us? We no. So <laughs> 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 um, just actually to know the audience a little better, who is a veteran in here? Did you recently transition? No. <laughs> so it's been a while ago. It's been three years. I'm actually speaking here. Oh, nice. I'm one of the years, but you got to say, it's like, who is the name of Cool. Well, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you found a lot of commonality between your experiences too. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully that a lot of this um, can apply because if you could be transitioning from anything like outside of InvoSec, it's just it can be just as difficult. You don't have to be coming from the military to, to take value from our, our experiences because they're only human experiences at the end of the day. So yeah. it doesn't want to carry over there. I think you can be so in reference to that too. Okay. Uh, I think. Uh, Malia's pit bull comment definitely <laughs> applies to veterans, right? We're, we're not aggressive. We're, um, we're cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We don't have a lot of time, so we gotta get to the point quickly. Like, we can't, you know, mess around. We gotta get your point across quickly, and that can come across as sharp. Ooh, you're you're short. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. it, you need to know what we're talking about real quick. We need to get to the point, and people cannot, sometimes they don't appreciate that. So, we have to, that can be challenging for us. So, hopefully, those who, who are better, you can, you know, kind of a, at least get a get more insight into, you know, the challenges that, that we face. And, you know, it's, it's definitely a bridge. You know, we need those allies, we need those people to understand us and advocate for us as well. And, so thank you for joining us. And if you if you want to talk to the panelists, you know, I'll be I'll be available all day. We also have a um, career session where all day, even if you're not a veteran, we will be doing uh, resume revisions and even just general career advice out in the hallway. You can sign up for that. So and everybody's welcome to participate in that. But if anyone has any other questions? All right. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it.